So let's talk about this blog post which was published a couple of weeks back which says that Chinese researchers break RSA encryption with a quantum computer. Now this is not a new thing. Quantum computers breaking RSA encryption has been a news for a very long time but it is theoretical right. So what I want to do in this video is cover a few things. What is this RSA encryption? What are quantum computers? And how do they even like you know what is the significance of something like this? So I'll link this blog post in the description description you can check that out. There is a method called D-Waves Quantum Annealing Systems which is one of the systems I don't know about how the specific things work. What I do know about is Shor's algorithm is one of the quantum algorithms. It can work on normal computers also but it's basically useless on normal computers but it is quantum compatible in a way. So if you run Shor's algorithm on a quantum computer of a relatively large size you can break RSA encryption. So let's talk about this a little bit because this, this is very interesting and you would learn a lot of things if you don't know any of these keywords. So let's talk about what's going on. So I'm going to start off right off with an example that you all can relate, right? So let's say this is your bank website, right? Let's say HTTPS bank.com, something like that. And this is you, your computer, right? Now let's say that you are on a public Wi-Fi. So you are connecting to a public Wi-Fi router, which is let's say in a cafe or something. And then this router is directing your connection to the bank and you know, the bank and back, right? So this is how the communication is working. Now the reason you can safely do all of this over public Wi-Fi also like there is no risk at all is because this website your bank is using HTTPS right so it's using HTTPS to transfer any data so whatever you write let's say you wrote your username and password as something this whole thing is encrypted and one of the ways this encryption can work is through RSA right so this RSA is one of the ways HTTPS can work and can operate on right so what that effectively means is that anyone who's an attacker let's say if somebody as an attacker is sitting and intercepting your traffic over here which by the way like anyone can on a public Wi-Fi network right so anyone can intercept your HTTPS traffic it's basically useless right even if they are able to intercept it's basically useless because they can't do anything with this because all they will get is some garbage right because assuming let's say that this is encrypted with RSA what they will get is garbage which is pretty much useless now you can ask like why would they get garbage I'll tell you because of the way like how RSA works right because RSA is an encryption which is a asymmetric encryption right so it requires public private key system so we'll talk about that a little bit so what happens in RSA encryption exactly is that if I increase the length of these two right so what happens over here is that let's say these two computers want to talk in a secure manner I'm gonna keep this very simple so I would avoid a lot of detailing within the algorithm but the idea remains same right so you both want to talk in a secure manner how do you do that well you use mathematics for it. So in mathematics, one of the fundamental problems is that if I give you a very large number, right, let's say if I give you this huge number, like this is even, you know, maybe you can imagine like 10 times larger than this number, just for the sake of argument. And if I ask you like this, I say to you that this number is a product of two primes, right? So there are two prime numbers who when you multiply, you get this number, let's say if that number is three and 11, right? So three and 11, both are prime. So in that specific case, this number would be 33. You're able to guess that, right? Because these 30, if I just give you 33, you can probably, you know, make your way to trial and error and guess like 3 and 11 would be those numbers. But if I give you an extremely large number, this problem becomes very hard. And however RSA works, like the actual algorithm of RSA, it works on the fundamental premise that you as an attacker who is, you know, having access to the garbage data, you are not able to decrypt this number, right? You're not able to understand like which two prime numbers constantly the this number right because how this works is that if you know both of the prime numbers which by the way only the person who is receiving the secret knows then you can just compromise the whole system because then what you can do is just open this garbage and convert this into actual text and then convert it back into normal text and encrypt it you know change the text and encrypt it back and send it across right so it will be like a perfect attack but we know mathematically it's extremely hard because nobody has been able to provide an algorithm which can help us factor these numbers quickly. Shor's algorithm is one of the implementations, right? So you see that in general terms, Shor's algorithm allows us to find prime decomposition of very big numbers in O log of n times the third power and O log n space. So Shor's algorithm, you can learn about this. I would cover it in probably no video because this is not a physics channel, but there are a lot of interesting videos on Shor's algorithm. But if you take a look at Shor's algorithm, it works pretty much in a way where it is able to give you these two factors, right? Now, Shor 
Lorentz algorithm doesn't work at all on classical computers. So there are two types of computers, right? Classical computers where you have zero and one as bits, and then there are quantum computers, which these Chinese people used. So these quantum computers and classical computers can both run Shor's algorithm, right? So you can literally like take this number, if let's assume like this is a product of two primes, and start breaking it down with Shor's algorithm. But it won't work because classically the algorithm is so slow that the actual intent of encrypting this number kicks in that it will take you an extremely absurdly large amount of time. So if I Google like how long to break RSA encryption. So you can see like one of these answers states that RSA 768 took 2000 years of 2.2 gigahertz single core operate Tron from the year 2009, right? And RSA 768 is not even in use now. So you'll probably use algorithms like this RSA 2048, which has 617 decimal digits. And you know, these are sort of the things which are usually used in serious encryptions. You can see that RSA 1024 itself will take 2 million years, right, to break from a normal computer. So you can only imagine like if you jump to RSA 2048, how much time it will take. However, things change a little bit when you run Shor's algorithm on quantum computers. There is a very interesting video, I think by Veritasium. Yeah, I think you should watch this video if you are interested. This one is a very interesting video about quantum computers in general, but Shor's algorithm also as far as I can remember. So I'll leave these links in the description below. But anyway, once you have done something like this once you have run Shor's algorithm what you can effectively do is reverse this number again simplified a little bit of details but you can reverse this number and then you can effectively break RSA encryption now you might think that okay quantum computers are not here and you know we should not be worried yet and it will take like a few more years or maybe decades to get quantum computers to a place where they can just easily break 2048 RSA encryption as well and you are right you may be right like it will take a lot of time to get to that point where you're able to do that but the problem is that meanwhile what you can do is as somebody who's you know a hacker or somebody who's trying to intercept very high net worth communications you can just store this garbage right who's stopping you from not storing this the whole security model relies on the fact that you don't have this garbage to break right and you will just discard it because you will not be able to break it but what people can do and what people I'm pretty sure also do is that you can just store this garbage somewhere right so let's say if you are intercepting some sort of high level communication between US and India right with the top leaders and all of that and you are able to intercept it somehow but all of that is garbage because of encryptions so the year is 2024 and you can just store all of that garbage with yourself and wait for the year 2050 right or 2060 when quantum computers become so powerful that they are able to break the RSA encryption used in the past because by that time we will have post quantum encryption schemes which by the way we already do have like if you look at Cloudflare, Cloudflare's post quantum encryption schemes. So you can see Cloudflare now uses post quantum encryption cryptography to talk to your origin server, right? So they did it last year itself. This is also one of the very interesting blog posts which you should take a look at. But what is happening over here is that let's say if you have garbage stored from the actual communication, you can just wait for a few decades and then break all of that communication when you are in 2060. And it's 100% feasible. It's 100% possible also. All the communication probably you're doing on Wi-Fi networks, if it is relevant in 20 years then you should probably not be doing it even though like it's secure right now that's the takeaway i would say but yeah i mean sure nobody's like really looking into your data your stuff unless you are very high ranking official or you know something very critical is happening but it's something you should know right it's something which is interesting which we don't think about as developers as people and this is also one of the reasons you should use cloudflare among many others right so that's all for this one i know i did not get into the actual rsa algorithm because I know that there are other videos on YouTube which would do a better job than me explaining that so I'll link them below but the basic idea is this only where you have like two primes and then you have like a modular number which is like sort of like a public number which you share alongside this prime itself and then you have a secret number so you can figure it out once you're trying to learn RSA encryption properly but that's all for this one hopefully you liked it hopefully you learned something new if you did make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel I will see you in the next video really soon Thank you.